Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In just a moment, we'll be continuing with the uh, presentation. I trust that you're enjoying uh, this presentation of my Easter story. But this will not be complete without the true message of Easter. Uh, to most people, it's just a long weekend uh, to enjoy the good weather and have some barbecue with family and friends. Uh, not realizing that more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died for their sins. And as you have seen in the presentation, Easter is not about bunnies and chocolate eggs, although they are fun. But Easter is about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us and gave us hope. In spite of the bad news that we hear around us, there is the good news. Because of what Jesus has done, we have been reconciled to God and changed the destiny of our lives. And through the arts, my Easter story presentation portrays the story of Jesus' life and ministry. More than 2,000 years ago, Jesus came from heaven and lived among us. He lived a sinless life and became the sacrifice to pay for the sins of men. He took our place and that his righteousness became our righteousness. And for about six hours, Jesus was on the cross and suffered in pain and carried our sins. Finally, on the ninth hour, this is about 3 p.m., he breathed his last. He died and was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. This is a historical fact. Throughout the history of mankind, Jesus was the only one who resurrected from the dead. And this proved that he is the Son of God, and he did what he said he will do. So today, we celebrate the fact that he is alive. God's not dead, he's alive. So tell the person beside you, Jesus is alive. And so having said that, the question that many people ask is why was it necessary for Jesus to die? What does this all mean? What is the Easter story? And here's what the Bible tells us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, it says this. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's judgment. For since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by His life. So friends, we can see from the scripture that the Word of God tells us that he, because of His great love for us, Jesus died for us while we were still sinners. You know, it's not when everything was fine, not when we got everything right, no, while we were still away from God, while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. And He died for three main reasons. May these simple truths minister to you. Let me just share with you very quickly uh, this afternoon. May these simple truths touch your heart today. The first truth is this. He died to redeem us. To redeem means to buy back something. And Jesus Christ died so that we will be saved from the judgment of God. He is our Redeemer, our Savior. Without the sacrifice of Jesus, there is no redemption. We were made right in God's sight because of His death. He who had no sin became the sin for us. That's why the Bible says in Romans 5, 8-9 to that we read, But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ. To die for us while we were still sinners and since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ he will certainly save us from God's judgment so you can see we were saved from God's judgment well, why was it necessary to save us well the Bible tells us that we were created in his image and for his pleasure 
But the reason why He saved us is because we were separated from God. We went and did our own things. We went in our own ways, doing our thing away from the will of God. That's why the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 53, verse 6, All of us have strayed away like sheep. That's all of us. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the guilt and sins of us all. See, friends, by doing our own thing, it has consequences. We are separated from our holy God who has a will and a purpose for our lives. That's why Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we can see that the penalty of sin is God's judgment, which is spiritual death. And death is being separated from God eternally. And so the problem with that is we cannot save ourselves. See, when we're separated from God, we cannot save ourselves. There is nothing that we can do that will bring us back to God. Friends, if you can do it, if you can save yourself, then Jesus didn't have to die. If we can do, do enough good deeds, well, whose good deed is better than the other? And you see, any of our good deeds is not good enough for our holy God. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9 tells us this. God saved you by His special favor when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Wow. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. You see, friend, a gift can only be received. You can't pay for a gift. And so God's gift is Jesus. That's why the Gospel of John tells us in John 3, 16 and 17, For God so loved the world, that includes you and me. He loved the world that He gave His only Son, that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Friends, the Bible says that by believing in Him, we can have eternal life. Because friends, God did not send His Son to condemn us, so we need to stop running away from God. I remember when I was growing up, I, I was running away from God, trying to do my thing. But the reality is God did not condemn us. He came to save us. We should be running to Him. Because He was blameless, we now became blameless in the sight of God. And you know, Jesus is the only way to God. He is the gift of God. And so John chapter 14 verse 6 says this, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only one who made this declaration. And he lived to prove it. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, the Bible says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. And so friends, when we could not save ourselves, Jesus came for us. He came for you. Romans 5 verse 6 says this, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came just at the right time and died for us sinners. He came at the right time. You know that God is never too late. Whatever you're going through, He is always on time. Jesus came at the right time. When we were dying in our sins, when we were away from God, when we were lost, when our lives was a mess, when we were doing our own thing, He came to save us. Not only did He die to redeem us, but the second truth is, He also died to restore us. Friend, Jesus died to restore our relationship with God. In Romans 5, verse 10 to 11, it says this, For since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, 
we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by His life. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful relationship with God. All because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in making us friends of God. See, through the sacrifice of Jesus, we were restored to that relationship with God. And now we become friends of God. Tell the person beside you, you are a friend of God. <laughs> Amen. Are you happy? Through Jesus, we have been restored. Now, restore means to bring back to the original. And so what did he bring back? Well, the Bible tells us that he first brought us back in a relationship with God. He reconciled us. We read in the scriptures that we can rejoice with our wonderful new relationship with God. All because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. You see, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve and for His pleasure. And they, had, they enjoyed a good relationship with Him. But because of sin, when they sinned, that relationship was broken. And Jesus came and restored that relationship with God. Now, we are friends of God. Amen. That's something we can rejoice about. Not only did He restore our relationship with God, but He restored your authority. You and I have authority in Christ. Adam and Eve had dominion over everything. But when they sinned, that relationship was broken and the authority was lost. But through Jesus Christ, you now have gained and received your authority. That's why Jesus said to his disciples in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 verse 19, He said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. So friends, as the scriptures tell us, therefore you and I have authority to overcome your circumstances. No matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult your situation is, there is nothing that God cannot do for you. You are not hopeless. You have the hope in God and through Him, you are an overcomer. You can overcome. You are more than a comfort through Him. Not only did He give you authority, but He also restored to us our abundant life. Jesus restored life to make you whole. He gave back what you were supposed to have. Do you know that the scriptures tell us in Ephesians 2 verse 5, even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, He gave us back our lives again. So now we have our life again. You have your life back. Not only did He give us life, but it is an abundant life. That's why the Gospel of John 10 verse 10 to 12 says this, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, not the devil. And then Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. In other words, an abundant life. He said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd laid down his, his life for the sheep. That's who Jesus is to us. He gave us the abundant life that we're supposed to have. So Jesus died to redeem us. The second truth is He died to restore us. And finally, the third truth is He died to release us. Jesus died to release us from the grip of the devil. He set us free. He broke the bondage of sin. And the reason why we celebrate today is because He is alive. He overcame death. Nobody else has done that. And you know, He broke the power of the devil. That's why the scriptures tell us in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Jesus also, He became flesh and blood, and by being born in human form, for only as a human being could He die. And only by dying could He break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So now you can see why He had to come and then die on the cross is so that He can defeat the devil. That through His resurrection, He broke the power of 
the devil. Death could not hold him. Jesus is risen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in him will never die. And so when we put our faith in him, we have eternal life in Christ. And so we don't have to fear life. We don't have to fear death. Because when we have Christ in our life, when we believe in him, we will never die. And the second thing is that he set the captives free. Luke 4, 18 says, He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the downtrodden will be freed from their oppressors, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And so, friends, he set us free because we're captive to our own self, in our own sin. And Jesus came to set us free from ourselves. We were captives. And so he set that free. And not only that, but he released the favor of God upon your life and mine. We read in the scriptures that the time of the Lord's favor has come. How many want favor today? Hallelujah. Jesus came and released the favor of God upon your life. That's favor. His favor is available for you. You don't have to work for it because it's the favor of God. So what now? Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead to redeem you from eternal punishment. Secondly, is to restore you into the original relationship with him and to release you from the power of the evil one, set you free and pour his favor on you. Now friends, that is a great blessing. Now that we know the purpose of Christ's death and that He is alive, the good news is that we can receive all these blessings from God by receiving Jesus Christ into our life. We have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Amen? Amen? God loves you and He wants to bless you. He desires to have a relationship with you. He wants you to be redeemed, to be saved. To be blameless in the eyes of God. He wants to change everything in your life. The only thing you need to do is to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Why personal? It's because sometimes we have probably grown into it. We've grown into a religion. Maybe when we were children, we were brought to a church, maybe even baptized. But we know that we don't have a personal relationship with God and we're not walking with him so receiving Jesus is to acknowledge what he has done for us on the cross that's why it says in the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 12 yet to all who receive him notice the word receive him you see you can believe in him but if you never receive him in your life you're still not in the family of God he says to all who receive him and to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So we need to receive because those people uh, who knew about him, they didn't receive him. In fact, they nailed him to the cross. Yeah. And so if we're here today, are we willing to receive him? We are all creation of God, friends, but not all of us are children of God. You did not choose to be born into this world, all right? But to be a child of God and to belong to the family of God, it's a choice. You have to make a choice. Others did not choose that. But all over the world today, there are thousands and millions of people making a decision for Christ. They're receiving Him. And so you may say, well, Pastor, I now understand God's love and plan for my life. I now want to receive Jesus Christ in my life so that I can be saved and I will have eternal life with Him. And you want Him to be your Lord and Savior. Well, how do I do it? That's the question people ask me all the time. How do I do it? Well, it's very simple. How do you receive Christ? Well, the first thing that we need to do is acknowledge that you have sinned. The first step to recovery is always to admit where we are. Isn't that true? We always admit first. Admit where we are. Admit that we have sinned. That I'm a sinner. In 
1 John chapter 1, verse 8 tells us that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Because the reality is all of us have sinned. And so we're becoming a liar if we don't have the truth. The second thing is believe that Jesus can forgive you and save you from your sin. That's an important step. Why? Because I want you to know that no matter how grave our sin is, there is no sin that Jesus cannot forgive. Now you may say, well, you don't know what I've done in my life. Nobody even knows what I've done. You know, my, my children don't know, or my friends don't know, my, my spouse doesn't know, but I've done something that nobody really knows, but I know God knows. I want you to know something. No matter how great that sin is, and no matter what, nobody sees it, God sees it, and He can forgive you. There's nothing He cannot forgive. And so today, God's God's forgiveness is extended to us. It says in 1 John 1 verse 9 to 10, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and what? Will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But if we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar and His word has no place in our life. And so we need to believe that He can forgive us. And the third thing is of course, Confess your sins and repent. So we acknowledge we have sinned. We believe that He can forgive us. And then we confess our sins and repent. Romans chapter 10, 9 tells us this. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe it in your heart. That God raised Him from the dead. You will be saved. That's a great promise. That's a great promise. Then you just have to confess it. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Time will not forgive you of your sin. You may say, well, it was a long time ago and I don't do it anymore. But time will not forgive it. It's still there. Until you confess it before God, it's not forgiven. You're carrying that guilt in your life. But when we confess it, Jesus is faithful to forgive us and to bless us. Amen? And so we need to confess our sins. Jesus uh, wants to forgive us. He's here today to forgive us of our sins. And then, of course, lastly, decide to follow Him. You know, friends, today you have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into your life. You may not have that chance again. We don't have any control of our life. Now, today you have that opportunity while you are here. Will you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ? See, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you want Jesus Christ to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. I want you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you. So that you can receive Christ into your life. And now friend, don't look at what others will do. You know, don't worry about what your spouse will do, the person beside you, or the one in front of you, behind you. Because your decision is between you and the Lord. One day, you're going to face God. And it's not going to be the decision of our spouse or our friends. It's going to be our decision. And so... Today, you have that opportunity. And so, there's nothing to be ashamed about. So, when I ask you to raise your hand, don't be ashamed. You know, to raise your hand. You know, you know why? Because Jesus Christ was not ashamed to die for you. He was mocked. He was beaten. He was insulted. He was put on the cross for all the world to see. And you know what? He was never ashamed to die for you. The question is, will you stand up for Him to say, I am willing to receive Him into my life. Right? And to be able to just raise your hand. To say, yeah, I'm not ashamed to receive Christ. Friends, no one will do that for you. No one will die for you like this. Only Jesus has done that. And so, friends, that's why Jesus can say this. Look what He said in the Gospel of Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. If anyone acknowledges me publicly here on earth, 
I will openly acknowledge that person before my Father in heaven. But if anyone denies me here on earth, I will deny that person before my Father in heaven. You see, friends, it's very clear. The time to acknowledge Jesus is not when we're dead. It is now while we are alive and we have the opportunity to do it. Right here, right now, we can acknowledge Him in our life. The best thing you can do for this Easter is to surrender your life to Christ. This will give meaning to this weekend. Now, will you take a step of faith and meet your Savior at the cross? Remember this, you are not joining a religion. You are committing your life to the one who died for you. Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lord. And so on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you're here today and you say, well, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus Christ in my life. You know, you may have been baptized before, you know, and maybe you're going to church, but going to church does not save you. It's only a decision to say, I want Jesus in my life. So if you're here today, you say, I want Jesus Christ, you're going to raise your hand to count of three, okay? Now, there's people also, maybe that you have known Christ before, but somewhere along the way, you have gone in your own way. You know, we get busy with other things, and you know that you're not walking right with God. And now God is calling you home. And He's saying to you, this is the day you can come home and you can just decide also to recommit your life to Him. And so I'm going to count to three. And at the count of three, if you want Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you want to recommit your life to Him, I want you to raise your hand. Okay? Don't be ashamed. All right? So are you ready? One, two, three. Anybody here? Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Those of you that, so that I can see you clearly, yes, go ahead. Don't be ashamed. I just told you not to be ashamed, all right? Don't be ashamed. Right? Stand, stand, wherever you are. Right? Now, I want to pray for you. I want you to come over here at the altar. You know, at the altars, when you get married, the altars, when you get dedicated, why not at the altar, you dedicate your life to God? Come over here. about your newfound faith in Christ. 
There's a Bible there. All right? So we want to give this to you. And also, there is a little, uh, a little invitation here uh, for those of you because you're a very important person. Did you know that? Jesus died for you. Now, in, the Bible says that when you give your life to God, your name is written in heaven, in the book of life. But here on earth, yeah, come on, give him praise. So your name are recorded in heaven, but we also want to record it here on earth. All right, so we have we have a little uh, little card like this, and we just want to get your name and a little information who invited you and how do we contact you. Why? Because we want you to grow in your walk with God. All right? And that's all. We just want to acknowledge your visit here. And also because we're inviting you to come on Saturday, April 27th, there's going to be a brunch. Yeah. All right? For you. Yeah. And the one who invited you will celebrate with you. Yeah. All right? So praise God. All right? So on Saturday, you can have a brunch. All right? And the, all the information is here. And your friend will remind you of that. Okay? Now, the counselors are going to come. And they're going to give you the package. Please fill out your name and the information. I trust I trust us. We're not going to give you any spam, okay? Yeah. We're not going to go spam with it. We just want to acknowledge your, your the fact that you've given your life to the Lord. Okay, so here are the, the counselors. They're going to get your name and give you the package. And the congregation, let's give praise to the Lord. <laughs> waiting for a moment as we are receiving all this information. Just bear with us for a moment. Alright. All right. Make sure you give every person. If you don't have one yet, there's some people on the back there they don't have. Alright, there you go.
that, Lord, that they will have a new relationship with you. And so we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead them and guide them. And so we commit them into your hand as they journey with you. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.